Hello. Enjoy it. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody, to A House Built on Sand with Jabril Khalif Al Sadat and Mark Hunter Brooks. We're going to talk about love today and how love makes the world go round. A um, lot of interesting stuff that could be said. And I, I was telling Jabril before uh, we got on, I said, I want to try and just you know, go, go to where we're uncomfortable to mm -hmm. talk about things and, um, and see if we can think of ourselves, think about how we love other people in, in ways that may challenge us or stretch us a little bit. Okay. Um, so, but I know Jabril's got a lot of things to talk about as well. Um, I, but I, I was sitting there thinking, well, and, and I, I was for, for, uh, the, Religious people in here, I was going back reading First Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter in, in the Christian Bible, the Greek Bible, um, and uh, really thinking about what I wanted to say. And uh, as Jabril was saying, let's just get in there and just riff, just like jazz players, just going in there and playing and, and taking off. But it's, it's so important. Um, because that's what really builds community. That's the foundation piece of community. Um, and we've said before, you, you need to know who you are and what you stand for, but you also need to have a part of you that stands for your family, that stands for your friends and stands for your community too. And that's all based on your love for them. And, um, one of the things I was reading in at, at the start of, of this passage, you know, that says you could, I'll just read Can you read it for us? Yeah, just read it. That's yeah, it, it just says, if if I speak in the, in the tongues of men and of angels, but I don't have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Mm -hmm. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but if I don't have love, I'm nothing. Okay. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender myself to the flames, but don't have love, I gain nothing. And it's... What I was reading was, is you could have all these supernatural abilities. You could, you know, have all these things going for you. You could have all this power and influence, all this wealth and celebrity. But if you didn't have any love in your heart, what do you have? And uh, it's, you don't need a lot uh, to live your life. But if you, if you have love, you have uh, value in value to your life. And not that you don't have value if you don't have love, but that it brings a certain uh, amount of value to your life that you don't need any, much of anything else. Just as we were talking food, water, shelter, uh, safety, clothing on your back, and the love of those around you, and uh, just the enjoyment of the people that you're with. And that's a lot. That's a lot of life. And and life is all about love. It's not about what you do. It's not about how much money you make or where you've gone on vacation. It's it's about who you love and who loves you and your family and your friends and, and helping people in your community. That's exactly what we're talking about. That passage is is real powerful about uh Issa ben Miriam and Jesus, son of Mary. And what he believed about love, because Jesus was all about love. Yeshua was all about love. Just like every time I start, you know, before I speak, I say, Bismillah, What am I saying? In the name of Allah, the compassionate and the merciful. Compassionate and the merciful is about love. You know, love does make the world go round. The last passage he read out of the Greek Bible was about love. You can have a lot of things in your life, positive or negative, but we'll stick to the positive part in your life. But if you don't have love, you have nothing. Because love is what makes the world go around. You know, a lot of people believe that, you know, you can hate, and hate is a powerful emotion. And it's the other side or it's the flip side of love. And it can move things through and it can destroy things. Mm -hmm. But only love can put things together. Only love can grow things. It's as simple as, 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 as speaking to your plants and, and loving language and loving words and letting, watching them grow. Just think about if you came in there and you yelled at your plants every day. 
would have happened. I mean, my baby, that'd be a silly metaphor, but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So there, you, go ahead. Oh, there, there was actually an experiment that was done like that in Japan where um, a school children talked good things to one pot of rice or it was a glass tube of rice and said bad things to another glass tube of rice. Um, and they put in positive words, encouraging words around this tube and negative words around the other one. And they did that for like three or four weeks. And the tube that uh, had gotten good encouraging things, it was the rice was growing and sprouting and whatever. And the, the tube that got the bad, bad words and the bad expressions had rotted. There you go. And it was the same rice and, and the same amount of water and the same amount of sunlight. And the only difference was really just what they did. And so it, it, it has things, implications for what you say to other people, as well as, you know, what they say to you and how it affects you. So even, even the words you say need to uh, convey love for other people in all different ways and, and forms. But, and, you know, the simplest thing you may say could have a whole lot of meaning and power for somebody else. Something you may not think much of could have a lot of meaning for somebody and could be life changing for them. And, and that in a way is love itself. My mother, who always says a great Southern Baptist woman, she always said that a harsh word was harder than a, a, a physical lick. Right. If you hit somebody, that pain will go away. But if you say something nasty to them, it will stay with them forever, yeah. which is true. The thing about love in Islam, especially in, in Sufism, the mystical part of Islam, it's an Arabic word called ishq. Ishq means divine love, because in Sufism, they believe that love is a projection of the essence of Allah to the universe. They believe that the whole universe is stuck together, is knitted together by love. Mm -hmm. You know, when they talk about a lot, what they how do they call them? They say, my beloved. They say, my love. That's how they project themselves. That's how they call for the creator. What do they call themselves? They call themselves lovers mm -hmm. because they love the blood. The number one poet right now in the West is a person named Jalaluddin uh, Rumi, a Persian poet living in Turkey. And he, what does he write about? He writes about beautiful, and I should have, I have his books here, I should read one of his poems, but he writes about beautiful love, and he talks about beautiful love, about for, you know, his, his, his lover who has gone away. And he, and he has these, love, these poems about longing, how much he longs to be with his with his beloved, and that's the true nature of human beings. We love to get back to our creator. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a longing to be back to our creator because without that, we are missing something. Think about that. Yeah, how cruel life would be if you were cut off from your beloved. Mm -hmm. Think about the first time. We fell in love. I call it lust now, but just, just think about it. the first time we all had that first love. Think about when that first love went bad. You know, before you went bad, you know, you always wanted to be around this person. You always wanted to hear this person talk. You just wanted to be in the presence of this person. You had a need. It's almost, you know, it's like some people say love is craziness. You had this need to be inside and be with this person. But then all of a sudden, you had a split up, you had a breakup, and you had a pain. Mm. And your whole body ached. You had a longing. And you, you had a missing of this person, that something was wrong. That's how human beings are about our creator. Yeah. We have a longing inside our souls to be with our creator. But we don't recognize it most of the time. And so but being temporal beings, we try to fill it up with materialistic junk. Yeah. So you as as you were saying all this, it was making me think there's there's people I know that I, I feel like they've they've gotten so beat up in life um, that they're afraid to make themselves vulnerable. And I think part of love is is being vulnerable, you know, to someone else, telling things about yourself, sharing, sharing yourself 
your your life, your moments, and things like that. But um, you could have had rejection. You could have had you know different kinds of abuse uh, thrown at you, physical or emotional or psychological abuse, and it and it just shrinks your life. You know, it shrinks your your world, and um, it's like, what's the cumulative impact of, um, you know, having all these relationships that go bad and what does it do to you? How, how much does it harden your heart to where you say, I don't want to hurt anymore, you know? And, and then for the other people that see that, how can you pull that out of somebody, uh, for the people that are experiencing that is how can you get out of it yourself, um, to, um, bring that love back in, into your own heart. And that I see is is kind of like a sense I see in society today is there's people who are have, have been so hurt by different things and, and by people who may be being selfish rather than thinking of others. And I feel like that's an important component of love is uh, people who were selfish hurting other folks as opposed to thinking of the other person. And then as a result, you've got all these people who are afraid to uh, get out and, and love other people. And so and said the word. go ahead. You just said the word. I'm sorry, control. You said the word fear, right? Yeah. And and if you if you have fear, you can't have love, right? Because they don't work together. You know, it's just like if you're doing bad things and negative things, you can't call yourself a loving person because it, it, you won't have to be able to open up your heart and have love inside of it. Right. And. The thing about love is there's a positive and a negative side of love. Now, the ancient Greek philosophers believed there were six forms of love. There was familiar love, mm -hmm. you know, your love for your family. We all familiar with that. They also believed there was friendly love, what we call platonic love. You know, that, you know, you and somebody else, you just, you know, it's not sexual, it's not love. You're just friends, pals, you know, you enjoy anybody, stuff like that. There was romantic love, eros. That's the love that Mark was just uh, talking about. That's a different kind of love. And the, the most times that love is on a physical level. There's the, uh, the self-love, which can be negative sometimes. You know, if you know about the myth of uh, the narcissist, you know, who looked into, mm -hmm. the, into the lake and seen his own, pit, own, own, uh, own, uh, own uh, image and loved it so much, they dropped into the lake and drowned. That's a self-love, right? Most times it's an egotistical love. And there's the divine love, the love that I'm that Rumi is talking about, the love for the creator, you know, what I call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Mark will call Jesus Christ, the divine love. So you have those different kind of loves, and then you have a guest love, you know, a love of, you know, when people come over and visit you and stuff like that, you have this kind of love. But then also you have, you know, the painful kind of love, the unrequited love, you know, which I was just talking about, you know, when somebody spurns you, right? You have an empty love, you know, that, that you know, which Mark was talking about when you, you know, you have a hole in your heart that you want to fill with something else and something enjoyable, someone to care about, someone to care about you. That's an empty love. You have a compassionate love where you empathize and you feel for other people. You have a a courtly love where you just like, you know, you, 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 you like to go, some people just like to go through the dating process and, you know, that makes them feel good. And, you know, they like, you know, buying the flowers and giving the gifts and stuff like that. I was in that, 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 uh, that uh, frame of mind at one point in my life when I was younger and uh, more foolish. And, you know, and then, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, then you will look at love and you ask yourself, what are the positive aspects of love? Right. You have you have kindness. Yep. You know you always want to be kind to people, right? And you need an open heart for that. And, what else do you patience. have? And patience. You know, yes, and patience. And patience. You have compassion. Mm -hmm. Because how can you be compassionate and not have a loving heart? It it doesn't work. And then you also have affection. You know that's a great part of love. Is affection the positive part of, of of love is affection, but then you have the negative part of love, which is vanity. Mm. You know the love of thyself, which I was talking about before about self love. You have selfishness. 
You know, when you can't give to other people, you know, you love yourself so much you can't give to other people. And then you have egotism, which all this is wrapped up in that one thing, egotism. You know, when, when the human being start having that identification of I, the self becomes I. But the love of self, the love of I is more important than anything else in their lives. Mm -hmm. That doesn't leave time for them to expand to love anyone else. Mm -hmm. And we all know a lot of people like that. Most of these people are immature and they never expand, they never grow up. They just, it's always about themselves. I, I, I. They become what we truly call narcissists. Okay. And so, I'm not going to give any names. Go so uh, we, we talked about uh, the golden mean in an earlier podcast where we talked about the middle road, and that's the golden mean. Right. Is neither, neither too much nor too little. And, and so I, I want to ask you, Jabril, what, what's on either side of love? I know anger is one, but what's on the other side? Is it fear or is it indifference? And, and I would say this is the same thing. If you had fear on one side is indifference, you know, on the other. I, I, and I think it's anger and fear are the opposites of that because you're thinking of yourself either to protect yourself or, or to, you know, get anger, angry or whatever. And it's like that fight or flight syndrome. But I've heard so many people say it's indifference instead of anger on the other side. So what, what, other do you side of what other side of love? Yeah. If you have love on one end, what do you have on the other end? Or the maybe it was, it was, it was what's on the other side of anger is indifference. But uh, if you have love in the middle and anger's on one side, what's on the other? Is it fear? Well, love wouldn't be in the middle. Love would be on one end. And on the other end, you have hate. Okay. Now, then, you know, before you come to hate, you have a lot of things become hate. Number one, you have fear. Yeah. You know, then fear breeds what? Fear brings anger. What does anger breed? Anger breeds hate. Yeah. I learned a hard lesson a long time ago that people will fear you. But if people fear you too much, they will hate you. Mm -hmm. And if people hate you too much, they will kill you. Mm. See, people don't realize that you can never you you can you can always take anything to the extreme, and especially you can take fear to the extreme. And fear breeds anger, and anger breeds hate. Now, I didn't come up with that. It was a little green man on Star Wars named Yoda that said that. <laughs> you know, fear breeds anger, anger breeds hate. You know, and hate brings chaos. You know, that's it. You know, love is on the other side of that. Now you have different gradations till you can get to love. You have empathy. Mm -hmm. You have compassion. Right. And then compassion, empathy and compassion can grow into love. Yeah. You know, and first you start off with like, you know, you can like somebody, then you can have empathy for them, then you can have compassion for them as you get to know them, as you get to hear their story, mm -hmm. as you get to hear about what, you know, what they all been through and stuff like that. And then you start feeling for them. You know, that's how friendships grow, you know, and they grow into love. You know, that's how my marriage started out. You know, me and my wife, we liked each other. And then from like, you know, I started empathizing with what she went through and stuff like that. Then I had compassion for, you know, her, what she went through. And then, you know, we lived the life together and we grew. And then, you know, love blossomed. Yeah. You know? And that's how it happened. On the other end of that spectrum, like I said, if you, if you have a, if we're talking linear, you have love and you have hate. Yeah. And you have all these in, 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 uh, uh, gradations in between. Now, if you're saying what's between love and hate, I would say indifference, like you said. Okay. You know, and, you, you don't care one way or the other. Yeah. You know? Well, and, you don't and like I was. Them, you don't dislike them. Yeah, I, I was sitting there thinking when you said Yoda and Little Green Men, I was just thinking how much fear people have of aliens. You know, they say, oh, they have all these alien abductions and, mm -hmm. you know, them sticking needles in my navel and, you know, uh, pulling out my DNA. And, and then you have all these supernatural. Uh, things that go on in the movie and I and you know we've talked about us being uh, eternal spiritual beings which should have a positive thing and we're all spiritual beings but if you have the movies telling you that anything spiritual you need to be afraid of you know 
what's going to happen in this world when you realize that you're a spiritual being and, you know, are you going to be too afraid to embrace other spiritual beings? Uh, are you going to be too afraid to in, embrace aliens, people who are not like you, whether it's people on earth or people who aren't on earth like you? And do you think that people who are in, on these other worlds, you know, would have the same kind of life or desires that you would want to raise a family, to want good things for your children, to, you know, have positive experiences? Um, and I think especially with, um, with those areas, with aliens and with the supernatural, you get the negative side, you get the fear side, which could, um, build a lot of negative stuff when you don't get the positive side. And I think there's a lot of positive things that you could say about those people as well. And those, those beings. you know, my, my, uh, view, like I said, and, and, and all this has to be in love. I believe, you know, like. Plato always believed in the good. When he's talking yeah. about a performance, he believed in the good, he believed in beauty, he believed in truth. Those were the three things, you know, good, beauty, and truth, right? And those were the, the forms that he believed in. I believe in the good, you know, regardless, you know, if there are aliens, and, and now the United States are starting to say there is aliens, you know, mm -hmm. out there, right? I believe they are good as far as I can tell as a human being. Because right. my idea of good might not be their idea of good. And it goes along with Allah, it goes along with the angels, it goes along with everybody. Right? Maybe, you know, that 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 Parthenon, that cosmogic mockery that we have about angels and in yeah. heaven and paradise and God and so like that. Maybe that was a bunch of aliens. Maybe that's true. You know, I I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't uh you know, go past it or, or knock it or something like that. Maybe that is a bunch of aliens and stuff like that that visited us, you know, millions of years ago. But whatever it is, I can't understand that concept of good or evil because I don't have that intellectual capacity. Just like I don't have as a finite human, as a finite being, I don't have the capacity to understand the thinking of the infinite. It's just not in my capacity. You know, because because my idea, you know, human beings can't even agree with each other. <laughs> Americans can't even agree with each other yeah. about what is truth and what is false. So how am I supposed to to understand some alien being or some divine being, which could be the same? They don't yeah. have two different things. So, but I know that love was put in what we consider what we call love and it's different language in, in different in different cultures in different languages love means something di totally different yeah. it's a different word you know you know when you talk about you know in latin we talk about amor you know that's something different than what we consider is love and stuff like that it's that like different gradations of love like i was just saying in in the english language which is part latin and part german and part all this other stuff it's just different iterations of what love is but the thing is, is that whatever happens, mm -hmm. you know, once you realize that we are spiritual beings and this temporal body, this finite body, this moral body, right, that has to decay and die, that has a certain amount of time in this, in this space that we're in, you realize how fast the universe is for you. You realize that you're not confined to to what we call death, and in the West, what we believe is an ending. And how do you get to that point? You get to that point through love. Mm -hmm. You get to that point through opening your heart and, and and searching, because through love, your intellect grows. You know, you cannot get to the next step of your evolution by hating somebody else. Right, and I agree with that too. At one time, my big thing, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me a black man on earth this time growing up in Jim Crow. Why? I don't know, but that's what, what I was made this time. So, you know, I came up seeing a lot of racism, especially in Chicago, because Chicago was a hub for a lot of racism. And one time it was called the most racist city in America because everybody's separated. Mm -hmm. and. I had to learn how to grow out of that hate and out of that anger to look at humanity as a whole. Because my job was not just 
to look at America or Americans or to look at the racial injustice in America, but to look at humanity as a whole and look at humanity's injustice to each other and injustice to this environment and injustice to other species as a whole. I expanded as my as I grew, as my love for, for, for my fellow human beings grew, my intellect grew. So mm -hmm. I started searching for humanity to see what is it to mean to be a human? Not what it meant to be an American or what it meant to be a black man or a black American. That's all good. And believe me, I don't take anything from racism mm -hmm. and I don't accept it and stuff like that. And I understand this history, you know, well. But as me, as who I am now, as Jabril Khalifa also died, my idea, my my function is to look at humanity mm -hmm. and try to understand humanity and why humanity, why human beings do this to each other. As I told Mark the other day when we were talking, I said, "Do you realize human beings are the only animals that can kill each other from afar?" That might not seem much when you think about it. Yeah, we can shoot somebody, but that's something that we are so detached from love that we can actually stand off and just kill another human being. Mm -hmm. When any religion that you belong to would tell you, and just like it does in Islam, killing one human being is like killing the whole human race. Mm -hmm. You know, thou shalt not kill yeah. in the Ten Commandments. You're, yeah. you're making me think about, um, you know, when you were talking about the time in which you've grown up and the things that you've seen, do um, you think that helps you love anymore? You know, I, I talked about my friend uh, a few podcasts back who uh, was in the hospital for a long time and um, had a near-death experience and how that deepened the amount of love he had because he said he realized when he couldn't do anything for himself and all these other people were doing all these things for him, he realized that the only thing he had that he could give them was love. And, uh, and that really, that affected me, you know, when he said that, but, um, that's one thing that everybody can give. And I, I sit there and think of other people who have gone through hardships or who may have had serious illnesses and recovered from it, you know, how that changes your perspective of other people and how that deepens your empathy and your compassion and, and your love for other folks. Um, so it, I, I would ask you, Jabril, do you think the way you grew up has, has deepened your empathy, compassion, and love for other folks? I know it has. I know it has. Because when you've been on the bottom, only place you have to do is go up. Yeah. Because it is through love that I truly believe that humankind can get back to the inherent purity and grace that they deserve. Yeah. That's, that's the only way. They cannot get back through hate. You know, they cannot get back through enmity. It takes love. It's only through love. And I'm not talking about some Pollyannish stuff. Love is real. And and it, and it, you got to dig into it, too. And you've got to sacrifice for it. And I think that's that's when you see the difference between just this superficial love and one that's deep is is the meaning that you put into it and the commitment you make to to its well-being and and its continuance. And a lot of people aren't willing to do that anymore. Because they're lost. A lot of people don't want to give because they don't think they want to get. But see, that's the wrong attitude. You know, you do the right thing, not because you're going to get plaudits for them, not because people are going to clap for you. You do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, right. period. Not because you want to get some reward for it, because if you want to get some reward for doing the right thing, then you're not doing the right thing. Mm. You know, you give of yourself like Jesus gave of himself. Like all the prophets gave of themselves, peace and blessings be upon them all. That's what true love is. True love is sacrificing. I always tell this, this, this one little story to that, that, that clarify it easy and, and people can understand it. It's like a bird. You got a cage. Mm. And you got this beautiful bird singing a, singing a song, you know, and you caught this bird. You know, one day you, you sit out and you said, okay, I hear this bird outside my window and this bird is singing this beautiful song and I love it. And boy, I'll be glad to wake up every morning 
And I, you know, I want to hear this bird sing. So you run down to the blacksmith and you said, the black, you tell the blacksmith, look, I'm going to catch this beautiful bird that has a song that his voice sound like comes from the God, but I want you to build me a golden cage because <laughs> I want to make sure this bird stays. So the, the, you asked the, the, the blacksmith how long it takes, and he said, I have your cage ready in two days. He said, good. Then you come back, you pay him the money for the gold cage, and you set the cage out. The next day you set a, you hear the bird every morning, but the bird flies away. So you set a snare out for the bird, and you catch the bird, and you put the bird in the cage, but the bird's not singing. You put in food for the bird. Every day you go back, bird doesn't eat. And you look at the poor bird and now its feathers are starting to molt. And the color that was a brazen blue is starting to gray. To, to gray. And you're asking yourself, what's going on? So then you realize, even though I love this bird, I gotta let it go. Even though the bird probably won't come back in my windowsill and I won't hear the beautiful songs anymore in the morning. I still have to let it go or let it die. Now, there's two kind of loves. There's the graveyard love of say, if I can't hear this bird, then nobody's going to hear this bird. Yeah. But there's the true love, the resurrecting love that says, even though I will never be able to hear this bird again, I will open the cage and let them fly through the window because I love it just that much. That is what love is all about. Love is about sacrifice. Love is about loving something better than you love yourself. And that's what humanity has to get back to. But unfortunately, we lost right now. And that's yeah. So uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, what's your views of love? Uh, so we'll leave you with that. This is a house built on sand. And we'll talk to you next time. Masalaba.